Hey there lovely people, Jonathan Matt Menes, Painted Love and welcome to my channel. For today's tutorial I'm working on an idea, a concept for short paint. Ordinarily I would work behind the scenes on a, a new concept for short paint but not this week because I didn't have anything planned so you're going to join me on the journey of this brand new idea. Well I think it's brand new, I'm not sure whether anybody else has done this with short paint it just kind of sprung off the top of my mind. It's a more of a modern finish that could work in a an old way as well. It's kind of suits my kind of style. Um, I'm hoping that you like it. Fingers crossed that it works. If it doesn't, you're still coming on the journey and at least we'll learn what not to do with short paint. Let's take a closer look at the project. So the look that I'm going to try to recreate today is the look of Terrazzo. Now, if you're not quite sure what Terrazzo is, go and check out Pinterest. You will see lots of different types of Terrazzo. If you've been to Italy and you've been to Venice and you've been in one of those beautiful buildings, more than likely, if you've looked down, you will have seen Terrazzo. It is a polished concrete with little chippets of stone in there where you can just see those gorgeous colours reflecting in the light. So that's what we're going to go for, Terrazzo. The two items that I'm working on are charity shop finds. Both of them were £5 each. I'm going to try and recreate it on this mirror and the table top. Now, I would always say when choosing to create a faux finish, you need to kind of marry up the style of furniture to the actual finish. I've gone for these two items because this is really flat and sheer. Anything with too many curves will not kind of look right for this look. Um, all, although having said that, this table has a slight um, curve to the edge. What I'm gonna do is actually unscrew the top and flip it over because there'll be less of a curve the other way around. And you will see that this table, it, although it looks good on camera, it's made of MDF. You'll see underneath, it's just cheap board. So I'm quite happy to do this technique on these two items. So let's get um, the tabletop off masking tape up the mirror and see how this works out. Before I start the technical part of the process, I'm going to do my um, canvas coat. Now, most of my techniques, I would always use a canvas coat over um, my piece of furniture. Think of this as like your prep work. You do not need to use a primer with any stone chalk paint, not unless you're going to get issues with um, bleed through. 
And even then, I always do a canvas coat first and then the piece of furniture will tell you whether it, uh, it needs that um, um, stain blocker on the top. You can go back over your chalk paint with stain blocker and then proceed. Um, this um, top, I'm gonna go with old white. And because the mirror has already got a gray color on, I thought it might be quite nice to change the background color of the terrazzo. So we're gonna go Paris gray on there. And as you can see, look guys, this is just MDF. To create the terrazzo chip hits of stone, I'm going to use one of Annie's products, which is probably underused and not appreciated for what it really is. Now, Annie Sloan has this gadget. Now, this is called her mix mat. Now, I'm using this all of the time when I'm mixing colours. The reverse side has a wonderful colour wheel on the back, so you can kind of mix your colours on the colour wheel. Um, but we're going to use this as part of the technique to create the stone chippets. Now, this is made from a silicone-based product. Now, any Sloan chalk paint, will it, it literally will stick to just about anything from glass to ceramic to brick, wood, you name it, it will stick. But this is about the only material that it doesn't like. Now, it really does work as a resist to chalk paint. So... That being said, I think this is the right material to work on to create these little chippets. Fingers crossed again. So fingers crossed we will get what I'm hoping for. Now, I do know that when you paint, uh, paint quite thickly over the top of this without any water, it will kind of stay on the surface. If you add any water to your chalk paint, then it will separate. So go straight from the can, give the cans a good mix and just lay this paint on about a millimeter or two thick and it should stay. Let's have a look. The colors that I'm choosing for my stone chippets are the Napoleon Blue, Enfleur, I've got Tilton, not too sure about that. Um, um, we've also got Antoinette and Primer Red. So your color choice is your color choice. You could go with just a couple, but I thought it'd be fun to kind of be a bit jazzy and go with lots of different colors. So I'm gonna take um, over some blue first, and all I'm gonna do is lay this paint on quite thick, as smooth as you can get it, and hopefully it should stay put without splitting up. Yep, basically that is going on really nice. You may get the odd area, and what I would say is, this probably will indicate the amount of paint. If, you, if it's splitting um, on the surface, that means there's not enough paint there. So, over some blue is on there. There's a few little splits, but I'm not gonna worry about that. That's gone on pretty well. Healthy amount. Let's go for on fleur. You could leave your paint out a little while and it will thicken slightly more to help with applying the paint onto the surface slightly thicker. There's one or two blobs of paint in there. This is an old can. That's that one on Fleur. And now we're gonna go with Tilton. A little bit of Tilton in there. Yep, staying on nicely on the surface. Next color. Antoinette, this is another really old can as well. Antoinette, healthy mount. That's that one. And then the final color, Primer Red, at the end. You could do individual colours, 
on the mat, do a whole individual colour on the mat, leave it to dry, however long it's going to take to dry, I will know that later on in the tutorial. We might blend those two together just for a little bit of a blend, that'd be nice. So there we go, that is our colours. I'll give you a little scan across how it should look. There is one or two little anomalies where it's separated, but all in all, that's pretty good. It's about a millimeter to two thick. Now, your drying conditions, it, it will all be around what sort of um, humidity you have in your environment. Here in the workshop, it's, it's fairly cool. I have quite a cool workshop, so it could take a day, two days to dry, but it does, need to be thoroughly dry. If it's not thoroughly dry, it will get gooey and sticky when we take it off, which you will see later in the process. Okay guys, the moment of truth. Now, um, this tutorial could end right now. Whether this works out or not, it could be an epic fail. So here's my mix mat and here's the colours that I painted and it is actually been two and a half days of drying time. My workshop is really cool. It's insulated, so it, it is really cool. Um, I presume this will dry at different lengths of time due to your climate. I wouldn't use any artificial heat um, or I wouldn't even probably put it out in the sun because um, it will resist. You can see there's maybe, you can see maybe on here, there's a few cracks uh, that appear. So if you heat this up, it will crack even more. Maybe that'll add to the process, I don't know. But I would say, leave it on a flat place, dry over a couple of days um, until you feel it's bone dry. Now what we're gonna do is crack this paint. That's literally, we're gonna break it up to get little fragments. So I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. So I'm just gonna kind of screw up the mat and see what happens. So, oh yeah, we're getting some sort of cracking. Yeah, oh this is quite fun. This is exactly what I was hoping for. Yes. Now, of course, you could pre-do this in different colours and have them separated, the colours, I suppose. You can put them in different containers. It's peeling off. Yep, yeah, this looks quite nice. I might have to keep on working it. So, I'm going to break it up into small fragments. I suppose you can do this as big or small as you like. I think slightly smaller pebble size is probably right for this look. Too big and I think it'll look wrong. Break them up, try and make them sort of organic shapes rather than unnatural shapes. I'm liking this, I feel like it's working well. There's a bit more to peel off there. You really will probably need a mix mat for this tutorial. I love my mix mat. I use it all of the time for colour mixing and a palette really, you know, a palette for... That is great. Should we take separate bowls? Because that's come off on its own, we could take separate bowls. So let me grab some separate bowls and we'll try and do these individually. That's what I'm looking for, right. Let's scoop these up and pop it into this bowl. Awesome. I feel like we might be on a winner here. Let's take all the blue off. There's a little bit of brown in there. Let's take them out. That was what I was hoping for. So we've got these little flakes now. 
Let's try and do the on fleur, see what happens with the on fleur. And I do this separate to the Tilton, maybe. I'm going to use all of the colours anyway, but I just thought if I've got any spare, I can reuse it. So quite often when I'm using my mix mat, I will just leave it to dry and actually flake. This is where the idea came from, really. I will just flake off the paint and then give it a wipe down and then it's clean. At least this will give me control, if I take them out and separate, and give me control of which colours that I choose to use or what proportions. And that feels good. There's a little bit of Orbison in there, but never mind. And a bit of the Tilton. Again, flakes, lovely flakes, all sort of angles. That's what I was looking for, so fingers crossed this will work out for me. Here we have all of our different colors of flaky paint. Now, I couldn't be more happy with the way that this has turned out. So I'm really hoping that the second part of this tutorial works out the way that I'm hoping. So I'm gonna make my special blend. This is a bit like a baking program. I'm gonna make my special blend of different flakes. So obviously we've got the uh, mixture of the primer red and the um, Antoinette. I really like this color. I'm kind of thinking this is gonna be really lovely for my terrazzo, so in they go. Um, and the other thing that I would say here is try and get each different um, different color, slightly different sizes. So here I've kept the on flare quite large in size. I think that kind of will look nice. So, and I'm just kind of moving it around the bowl to try and check what the color palette's like and the sizes of flakes. So that, that looks really nice. A few more. I'm doing two projects, so I might need a little bit more. Um, over some blue, they're going in. They really do need to be com combined really well. So we've got that random. And then I'm thinking, I'm, the Tilton is quite feisty, so I'm gonna break these down quite small and only add minimal, so not much of this color, just the odd little bit of a flake in there. So slightly less proportions of the Tilton. Any big flakes, we're just gonna break them down. So as you can see, you, you kind of get in the vague idea in this bowl of how the color combination is gonna be. Um, a little bit more. We'll go for some small, small, small stuff. A little, few little flakes in there. And more of the Oberson. I like the Oberson. I really think that's a lovely colour. A little bit more of the pinks. Pinks and reds. Yeah, this is looking great. It's kind of looking a little bit like Terrazzo. Right, I think a little bit more of the primer red and the pink. That's where we're going. So that's my mix of the flakes. Try not to lose too much. I think we're good to go with the application of these to the surface of each project. Before I move on to the next part of the process, I've been kind of thinking how I'm gonna apply 
the beautiful flakes that we've created for the terrazzo look. Now, I did consider using glue, and I'm not ruling that out. It could be a good way for application, but I'm gonna go with applying with chalk paint. Now, there is a method to my madness in this because I'm gonna encapsulate all of these beautiful flakes within the chalk paint. So I'm gonna paint uh, a healthy coat on the surface, then we're going to sprinkle these in like glitter and then I'm going to paint over the top. Um, it sounds strange, but I want these chips to be surrounded by chalk paint. Then we will reveal them by sanding back a little bit later. I'm going to work on the whiteboard, which has had two full coats of white chalk paint. It's a, a nice even coverage. Um, one thing that I would say is when we're moving on to the sanding part of the process, any sharp edges, you're gonna to have to stay away from the edges um, with the sandpaper because you will reveal the dark color from underneath. If that happens, we're gonna kind of fudge it back in with a bit of white chalk paint. We are gonna get what we're gonna get. So let's start with a nice healthy coat ready to sprinkle the gorgeous flakes into. So off we go. I've got the white chalk paint here. This is our white, two coats and I'm gonna apply this quite thick and liberal, but you've got to be quick because you don't want it to dry out. We're using the paint as a glue. So healthy coat all over the surface. And also what I did do on the second coat, I kind of cross hatched. So I went in the opposite direction with the chalk paint. So if there is any anomalies that created by the brush strokes, they will kind of change once it's been sanded, it'll kind of look a bit more organic. Just think of this as your glue for the treatment that we're gonna work on. So work quick. If it's a larger piece, I would say maybe a couple of sections um, but blur the boundaries of those sections. Don't do them in straight lines because it will not look organic. And the whole thing is to try and get this to look as if it was really organic and not um, man-made, even though terrazzo is man-made. I will go back and clean the edges up afterwards. It's all about getting this, these little flakes in place. So again, a thick coat of paint to smooth it out. It should be enough to stick down the little flakes. Let's have some fun. So I'm just gonna hold from a height and I'm gonna sprinkle these onto the surface, trying to get them not even. This is where you'll have lots of fun doing this look. Already it looks kind of like terrazzo, which I'm dead chuffed about. It's hard to get them to go where you want, the, want them to go, but I think holding from a height is probably better for this. And then I'm gonna kind of crush some up in my hands a little bit smaller, so we get the odd smaller chip it. as much or as, as less as you like. I think it will be better being slightly heavier. For me, definitely heavier. Plenty for the next project as well.
Right, what I'm going to do now is just kind of press these down with the back of a brush just to make sure they're getting some sort of connection with the paint. Yes, you're going to lose some of them. Don't panic. This is how it should look. We just want to kind of just make sure that they get embedded. Contact to contact is what we want. So don't worry about the paint lifting. That's okay. Because like I said, we're going to paint over this quite heavily. As long as that they're not transferring to other places, just kind of push them down. They seem to be pretty good. They seem to be sticking in. So that's really, really good. That one's kind of overlapped, so we might just kick that out of the way. That's good. Some of them will overlap, I'm sure. There's a couple that are overlapped. Pull them around. You may have to fiddle around a little bit. I'm just going to pop some on the edges. That needs a little bit more paint there. Yeah, that feels good. Okay, so this has now had a good 15 minutes drying time. I've kept on pressing down. There were a couple of areas on the edges where I felt like there wasn't enough of a, a sprinkle. So I went back with the paint and kind of pressed in a few areas where I wanted extra flakes to be. I'll show you how it looks. Um, it's quite a good even spatter of um, chip it in there and I'm quite happy with it and like I said it's all pressed down it seems quite well adhered to the surface so now we're going to go back over with a healthy-ish coat of paint which should then enclose the gaps around each chip of paint so in with the same colour again we're going to go down with um, the old white I think drying time is quite important because you don't want these to lift up or the paint to submerge around. So just go back in over everywhere, liberal amounts. We're going to lose them for a while until this is really, really well dried out. So then we can go back in with um, a sanding, uh, sanding. So probably um, a few different layers of sanding, quite strong sandpaper to begin with, and then work down. Fingers crossed that it will reveal in a really lovely way. I'm not bothered about this having a little bit of texture. I think that will be kind of quite fun. Um, normal terrazzo would most definitely be very sheer. It would be very sheer, but I think with the thickness of the uh, paint chips, it's not going to be sheer. It's going to have a little bit of texture on there. But that's okay for me. Um, I think it's all part of this look that we're creating. And texture's good, isn't it? Texture, I mean, I've not seen this been done with any other, um, anybody using short paint for this before. So let's see. So now what's happening, The each flake is getting uh, incorporated around underneath um, 
and around the edges. I might just give it a slight brush the other way as well, just to make sure it gets pushed all the way around each edge. I wouldn't say too thick a coat, you know, just a healthy amount and well spread out because otherwise you're going to be doing a lot of sanding to come back to these other little bits. And once you've done this, you can go around the edges and neaten up the edges with some, um, in this case, white chalk paint. And then I'm going to move on to the mirror frame. I'm going to do the same thing all over again, but this time, obviously, it's got the, the Paris grey background, which I suspect will probably be nicer than the white. I'm not sure. I suppose it's all about colour choice. What you choose to do with your project is your colour choice. tidy up the edges. I left my um, project to dry really well. It's had about three hours in the sunshine. You can leave it out in the sunshine at this point um, to dry. Make sure it's completely dry. No wet areas because that will just submerge the paint around. A few of the things that I'm gonna be using, number one, a mask to um, cover my face. I do not want to be breathing any of the dust. I have got 80 grit sandpaper, a couple of squares here, which is quite strong. I'm gonna be gently um, using that just to remove the top surface off the higher ground. And then I've got a set of Annie Sloan sanding pads. Now these are great because they're, they've got a foam back and they will allow you to put the right amount of pressure on without taking it too far. We don't want to come back to any of the wood. We just want to take the um, flakes. We just want to take the paint off the top surface of the paint. And of course, these come in um, coarse, medium and fine, so I can build down to the finest layer. So let's give this a whiz and see how it comes out. Fingers crossed guys, fingers crossed.
Well, I could not be more delighted with the outcome of the terrazzo. Everything that I expected to happen kind of did. So if you're following this tutorial step by step, go and give this a go. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, one thing that I would say is on the mirror, I used the mouse sander and that did make light work of all of the sanding. Of course you can hand sand. The reason that I went in with hand sanding was because I was a little bit worried about coming down to what lied beneath, i.e. the dark color underneath of the piece of furniture. But if there's plenty of flakes sitting in that paint surface, then the mouse sander should just hit the high ground and take off all of those lovely chippets of paint rather than underneath. And then just go back and refine with an Annie Sloan sanding pad and everything will come out beautifully. So all that's left to do now is put, put a colour on the lower half of here and I've decided to go with Paloma. I think this is kind of keeping it fresh and modern and contemporary. I think it will work really well together and I'm really excited to apply the wax at the end of this so we can see how glorious those chippets of paint are in the surface of the tabletop. Okay, so this is gonna be the best bit for me. Many times people say to me they don't like waxing, but when it comes to a technique like this, I really like waxing. As you can see, it's kind of a little bit smoky and the colors are gonna get a little bit more crisp. Make sure you do give all of the residue of dust a good old brush off. Um, this will clean up the white as well. So there's no residue there. And we're gonna go in with just wax, clear wax, with a wax brush, which I have here, just an ordinary wax brush. I'm gonna give it a real healthy coat. And we should see the colors come to life. There you go. They're zinging to life, these colours now. Oh, it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I love the little flecks of white where I didn't get all of the white paint off. That works for me because if you think about stone that's inlaid into concrete like terrazzo is, it would be kind of a different level. So that kind of works like the original. I am going really heavy with this wax. I just want to make sure that everything is really cured. There's a lot of paint on there, so I really want to make sure I'm pushing everything into the, wax, into the chalk paint. So ordinarily, you wouldn't need this much wax, but I think for this, loads of protection, and then just offload. Take off any excess. And then tomorrow, I can go back and give it another polish. quite good. I feel like even the colour combination is not too bad. It's kind of really modern but if you can imagine this with softer colours like the Antoinette, Paris Grey, maybe a bit of Paloma and Scandinavian Pink, you could end up with a very different look. So colour choice is down to you. I think this really works well. I quite like the Primer Red as well. I think it looks really cool. 
There we go. So now I'm going to wax the mirror and the base of this table and put it all back together and see how it all looks in the situ. So that's just about all for today's tutorial. I really hope that you enjoyed joining me on this journey. I had no idea how good the results would be and I'm pretty pleased with this. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please go away and give it a try, at least on a sample board. Let me know how you get on. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe, hit the notifications bell for future projects and of course, a thumbs up would be great to help the algorithms. Let's spread some painted love. I'll catch you all next time.